Okay, so uh, so good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Responsibility. I'm here in uh, in Wichita Falls, behind the Popeyes on Southwest Parkway. Uh, as you can see, there's a trail just behind here, uh, connects to the Lake Wichita Spillway, and uh, I'm coming up on the trail now. And uh, there's all these deer, all these deer deer further down the trail. You see them? counted eight earlier. All right, so here we are just at, uh, just at sunrise uh, at this little creek that, uh, that feeds Lake Wichita. And I'm in front of Prunus angustifolia. This is Chickasaw plum. Uh, it's in the rosaceae plant family, the rose family. Uh, the genus is uh, the one that contains cherries and plums. And so this is related to the, the cherries and plums that you eat. Uh, and this one is actually, the fruits of it are edible. Now all this green in front of me here is the Prunus angustifolia. And actually this goes on quite a ways uh, in this direction and then also, uh, you know, behind me further up the creek here. But as we can see, this is a thicket forming uh, plant. It's a small shrub. It doesn't usually get much taller than this. And now we're at the tail end of its flowering. This one flowers first, so all of the flowers come out before any of the leaves do. And you can see as the flowers are starting to fade out, we've got some spent flowers here. They've already lost their petals. Uh, the leaves start to emerge. And so this is one of the things that we use to identify species in this genus because it is a very, uh, a very populous genus. There are many species in the genus Prunus in our area. Uh, and it's also a great plant for uh, for wildlife. It's actually, uh, according to Doug Tallamy, do you know Doug? He uh, he says that this uh, this genus in North America supports over 450 species of uh, members of the Lepidopteran order of insects. That's the order for moths and butterflies. So these are what we call uh, exerted stamens. So you see uh, that we're looking at the flower here. We see our clawed petals. Uh, that's pretty distinctive in uh, in this genus, the Prunus genus. And these things that we're looking at that are sticking out are, are the stamens, right? The male reproductive organ. The green one there in the center that looks a little bit different. It's actually got what looks like sort of like a mucus coming off of it. That's the uh, the stigma, and that's suspended on the style, and that connects to the ovary of the flower that will become the fruit, right, that we know as a plum. And so that's actually going to become what you eat. Uh, in this species, we see we've got an umbel of flowers, so we've got a bunch of different flowers all connected at a single point on the, on the stem. We call that an umbel. Uh, and another thing is that uh, we see these little green leaves that subtend. Uh, the flower here, these are the, uh, the calyx lobes, uh, also known as the sepals, right? So when you're keying out these plants, uh, like in the key that I just used this morning, it talks about uh, the arrangement of the sepals and if they're uh, toothed or not, and also the size of them. So things that are always helpful in the field are uh, rulers. Obviously take photographs, and ideally if you can, take a sample of your plant and a flower. If, if they're available. Okay, so we've got some young leaves. These aren't fully mature yet, so they're not as big as they're going to get, but we can already see that they have what we call serrate margins. So the sides of the, the edges of this leaf look more like a, like the blade of a saw than, you know, a neatly, a neatly, uh, what we call entire margin leaf. Uh, and this is not uncommon in members of the rosaceae uh, plant family. This is a pretty distinctive uh, one because of its, its uh, thicket forming habit, but what you'll always want to do uh, when you're in the field is key your plants out if you can, especially if you're not really confident in your ID. So what I've got over here is my big book. Now I do have this in PDF form, but I thought it would be cooler to take it out here and show you guys. Uh, this is a book of keys, so on this page we've got listed here in bold all of the species in the genus Prunus. Uh, and then over here we have a dichotomous key that teaches us uh, 
how to separate them from one another. And so basically by looking at a specimen, I can go through and answer all of these different questions uh, and confidently come to, uh, come to my genus, or rather my species. Uh, and so I was able to confidently identify this this morning as Prunus angustifolia. You know, I was pretty sure that that's what I was looking at, but it always helps to, uh, to verify your findings, especially if you're going to be uh, talking about uh, what you found to other people, like I'm doing right now. Here we are looking at the, uh, the trunk, the lower trunk. Uh, we can see that this has a, a pretty dark bark uh, for most trees around here, especially smaller trees. And we see these really distinctive white spots here. These are the lenticels that I've talked about before. Uh, and they, they starkly contrast this dark bark. And often, not always, but often on Prunus angustifolia we'll have these, uh, these thorns here. So the branches will end in these little pointed terminal thorns. Uh, that's not uncommon. And then my book was talking about sometimes you see zigzagging uh, in the branches and you kind of see that here, right? So in the in this stem here we've got a little bit of a zigzag. So those can be other tools that you can use to help identify Prunus angustifolia in the field. This, this species is thicket forming, so often the easiest way to identify this plant is just by seeing these really dense small dark stemmed uh, shrubby plants, right? Uh, and then again, if, if it's not in flower and it's got leaves, you can easily tell by the leaves. It does flower uh, February to April, so now is the perfect time to go out and look for them in your area. I really hope you guys are enjoying uh, Responsibility. Let me know what you want to see more of in the comments below. I'll see you guys next week.